The year is 2009, and as you're sitting in your big boy diapers double fisting animal crackers, you hear whispers that a new Batman game is around the corner, and one thought crosses your mind. This game's gonna fucking suck. Don't get me wrong, a good superhero game wasn't unheard of, but most of the time, if it wasn't about Spider-Man, then that shit was probably gonna be awful. There were a few exceptions, but most of the time it was just a quick cash grab tie-in movie game, so I don't think many people were exactly hopeful for Arkham Asylum. But then, the fateful day of August 25th, 2009 came, and suddenly, the comic book gaming scene was changed forever. What's up guys, Goodnight Gaming here, and I'm back with another video, and I have to be honest, I was sitting here pondering on what game to talk about next for a little retrospective video. You guys seemed to like the Mortal Kombat video, and I had fun making it, so it was only a matter of time before I did another. And I had a hard time thinking of what game to do next, but then it hit me. The only option I had here is to do the game that I have completed the most amount of times in my life, that I've 100%ed more than any other game. The game that I know inside and out. That's right, today we're talking about Madagascar 2 Escape to Africa for the Xbox 360. No, 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 I'm kidding. We're talking about Batman Arkham Asylum. I have played this game to death. It is one of my favorite games ever made and I truly believe that it is a masterpiece and today I'm going to tell you why. We're going to be tackling many different things about the game, but before we jump into that, I just want to give you a background on this game. Specifically, how it was made, or how this game was made by pure chance. It all starts with a little movie called Batman Begins. Now this is the early 2000s and every movie that comes out, of course, is going to get a movie tie-in game. And that's what they did for Batman Begins. Now the game itself, uh, not, not great reviews, didn't get a lot of amazing reception, but it made that money, baby. So it was only due time for when The Dark Knight came out that they would also make another game for that. And this game was to be spearheaded by Pandemic Studios, and you will know them from their work on the original Battlefront and Battlefront 2. And the game was to be published by EA. But Pandemic Studios weren't just gonna make a lazy, cheap movie tie-in game, no. They had plans to make this the first open world Batman game. They didn't want it to be linear like Batman Begins and all the games that came before it were. They had a lot of ambition for this game. But as soon as EA realized that Pandemic weren't going to hit their deadline for when this game was to release, they canceled it entirely. So EA having the rights to publish Batman games and not having a Batman game, they quickly lost the rights to making the Batman game. So when it came time to give another studio the rights to making these Batman games. For some fucking reason, they gave it to a studio with one game under their belt, and it was a shooter. They gave it to Rocksteady Studio, and thank God they did, because Rocksteady showed that they had incredible passion and dedication for making this the definitive Batman game, and that was their goal. And of course, they thought if they were going to make the definitive Batman game, they had to come out swinging hard. They had gotten what most people deemed the definitive voices of the characters. Returning from the Batman animated series, Arlene Sorkin for Harley Quinn, Mark Hamill to come back and voice the Joker, and they had gotten the late great Kevin Conroy to come back and voice Batman. So Rocksteady has all these pieces lined up. The question is, do they put them together correctly to make a satisfying video game and to reach their goal of making the definitive Batman game? Well, let's jump in to the story. The game opens up with a shot of the bat signal illuminating the Gotham sky, as Batman has just apprehended the Joker for holding the mayor hostage at City Hall. 
He races his Batmobile down the street until he arrives at the setting of the game, Arkham Asylum. Batman brings him inside intensive treatment to be escorted to his cell, Joker strapped in and ready to go, and as we get closer to his soon to be cell, it's revealed that hundreds of Joker's men have been transferred to the asylum. Batman meets up with Commissioner Gordon as he is very skeptical of just how easy it was to capture the Joker, suggesting that the Joker has much bigger plans. Unfortunately, he's right. He surrendered almost without a fight. I don't like it. As Joker breaks free from the guards and his restraints, and is assisted by Harley Quinn to escape from Batman. It's now up to Batman to stop the Joker, as he releases every inmate onto the island, including Batman's most notorious foes, making this one of the most challenging nights of Batman's career. And that is the foundation for what our game is about. I love the opening to this game. Right away it sets the tone, gives you a very dark vibe with the scenery and the music. And right after Batman brings in Joker, we have to do a long walk down to his cell. But during this walk, it feeds you a lot of information. This was a good and quick way to show you that the Batman we have here is a seasoned veteran. This is a Batman who's been in the game for a long time, and it's pretty much assumed that he's put away 90% of the inmates in Arkham Asylum. Most of the guards trust him and let him walk through. I love these little moments we get along the way, like where they're passing through a metal detector to see if Joker's carrying any objects on him or anything dangerous. And when everyone's inside it, it goes off, it starts blaring sound, it turns red, only to reveal Joker has nothing, it's all Batman. Showing that Batman is always going to be prepared and that either the guards respect Batman enough to not ask him to put away his things or they're too scared to ask him, which either way, I think works. Ooh. Would you sneak in with your bats? Come on, tell me, tell me. Batarangs, bat claws, ooh, bat smacks. And along the way, there's just so many guards and doctors lined up, making sure that Joker doesn't escape, showing just how dangerous he is. There's another group of inmates passing by, and as they're going, they're chanting, Joker, Joker, showing that even in the asylum, Joker still has control. And if that wasn't bad enough, he literally says this. I still have a trick or two up my sleeve. I mean, don't you think it's a little bit funny how a fire at Blackgate caused hundreds of my crew to be moved here? <laughs> it's a great way to set up why this all happened. We don't need a goddamn exposition dump. We don't need a flashback showing how he did it. It's literally one line of dialogue and you understand. I also love this moment where the elevator breaks down for a second and when the lights come back on, Batman just has his whole hand gripped around Joker's esophagus. They show us a little tidbit of Killer Croc. And you don't see him a lot through this game. This is pretty much the only real part you see him before his boss fight later on. And it puts just enough fear in you to make you worry about facing him later. And I love throughout this whole walk, Joker's just talking shit, making jokes, and Mark Hamill does an incredible job. Oh, Frankie, you really should learn to keep that fat mouth of yours shut. It'll get you into trouble. But that is enough about the opening of the game. Let's tackle in to a little bit of the rest of the story. I'm not going to go through everything, but I'm just going to go through what it was pivotal and how well it works as a story as a whole. Plus, I'm assuming that most of you that are watching this video have played the game already. And if you haven't, you go ahead and give this game a shot. So we learn that Joker's big plan for the story, he wants to use the venom that powers Bane and recreate it to put into other inmates to terrorize Gotham. The venom is called Titan. And throughout the game, we see him use variations and early prototypes of it on other inmates. And his plan is very comic booky. There's no denying that, but it never really steps into the realm of goofy. They do a good job handling it and make it more dark and keep in with the same tone as the rest of the game. And I think what helps that is the fact that you see these transformations play out right in front of you. You see how grotesque these people become. It's not, it's not pleasurable. And they don't 
overdo it. They space it out anytime there's a little Titan boss fight. Now, it would be completely cartoony and goofy if you were just walking around the island and you just see these big fucking hulking monsters walking around. That would be too much. That would be just stupid. But they handle it really well. And these guys are like gross as shit. They got bones popping out of their skin. They're all grotesque. Their bodies, parts of different sizes. It's a great way to show that Joker is not even close to creating what Bane is. Because you look at Bane, Bane's all perfectly symmetrical and muscular, and he's got all these fucking tubes in him. I wish Bane stayed around a little bit longer, considering that an aspect of him is used for the main plot of the game. But he does exit in one of the most baller fucking scenes Batman has ever had. I will break you, Batman! Then the Bruja! No, Bane. This time, I break you! Man just launched millions of dollars at him like it was fucking nothing and drowned it in the water. And he just looks at it like, you know, I'll just buy another one later. Now throughout the game, you have someone in your ear named Oracle. Her real name is Barbara Gordon. She's the daughter of Jim Gordon. And she's kind of like Batman's guy in the chair. Uh, um... You know, I was gonna make a joke here. I feel like it's better left unsaid. But she pops in Batman's ear throughout the game, mainly if Batman ever needs help or he needs to know about something or after something big has happened. Kind of reminds me of Resident Evil 4 with Leon and Roost, but it helps kind of fill the void. I love that it gives Batman someone to talk to while we're making our way around the asylum so it doesn't feel as empty. Oracle, we've got another problem. What now? Two-Face? Riddler? Some kind of giant Joker robot? Unfortunately, nothing that simple. Now, here's where I think the story is at its strongest. The Scarecrow Nightmares. I think this is probably everyone's favorite parts of Arkham Asylum. When Batman first encounters Scarecrow in this game, it is in the medical hospital after he takes an elevator all the way down. And when he steps out of that elevator, he just sees this horrifying image of what looks like people beating each other up or scratching at their own face and they're, they're going insane. And this is your first introduction of Scarecrow. Now at this point in the game, Batman is looking for Commissioner Gordon after he's been kidnapped by Harley Quinn. So when he turns the corner, he sees Gordon being dragged away by someone. And after going a little bit further, he sees what he thinks is Gordon's dead body. He takes a moment to close his eyes, but then he has to keep moving forward. And I love when you walk down this hallway, there's just a bunch of cockroaches just seemingly coming out of nowhere. And it has a little Dutch angle to it, like it's all tilted to let you know that something isn't right here. So then you open the door to what seems to be a morgue and you walk around there for a minute or two and there's nothing there. You can't interact with anything. There's nowhere else to go until you eventually just try to leave and it's the same goddamn room that you were just in. This time with body bags on the table. So when you go to open up the body bags, one, you see Thomas Wayne, and in the other, you see Martha, and in the third one, you finally see Scarecrow in all of his glory. And when you turn around, everything's gone, and that sets up your first Scarecrow nightmare. I'll talk about the gameplay of the nightmares later on, but I just love the setups to each of these nightmares. It's really the only time in this game where Batman shows something other than being stoic. He's more vulnerable in these moments. You really see him actually scared. And this first nightmare reveals that he has the uh, irrational fear that he could have stopped the mugger at eight years old, even though, you know, he, he couldn't have. He should have stood up to him, son. Like a man. The second nightmare has him relive the death of his parents as the hallway to the Arkham Mansion slowly turns into Crime Alley. And you cannot tell me that this isn't one of the hardest shots in any Batman media ever. The third nightmare does something incredible and everyone already knows it. If you don't, the third nightmare plays in to our fears. So out of nowhere, you're just playing the game normally and as you're walking down, this hallway and in intensive treatment. This lady comes over the intercom and says, Did anyone catch the game last night? And then the game seems to just glitch out and die. And then it loops back to the opening cutscene. Every single person in 2009 shit themselves. <laughs> because the fear of a gamer is that you have made it so far into the game 
and suddenly you just lose all your progress. But then we are relieved when we see that the bat signal is replaced by a scarecrow logo and we can all take a breath of fresh air. It sees the opening cutscene play out like normal, except Joker and Batman are swapped, and we get to play as Joker and walk Batman down the hallway as we did in the beginning of the game. I like to think that this shows that Batman feels like he is not too different from the criminals. Maybe this is how he would feel he would become if he did cross his no killing rule. Because in all reality, Batman is a fucking psychopath, but He's a psychopath with morals. And Joker proceeds to shoot Batman. And that leads to our third Scarecrow Nightmare. Just absolutely creative stuff. And easily some of the best parts of this game. I see you, Batman. I love how throughout the game, Joker will pop up on these TV screens or or over the intercom and just taunt you. It's too easy. Oh, think about it. I got you trapped in a little metal box hanging precariously over a deadly drop. What say I just blow the emergency brakes and drop you like a sack of puppies? As well as throughout the story, he just continuously keeps raising the stakes. He pushes a button and he releases all the lunatic inmates at once. He releases Poison Ivy from her cell and she's probably one of the most dangerous people throughout these games. He fucking starts putting Titan in Gotham's water supply. And then if Poison Ivy wasn't bad enough, he fucking injects her with Titan, which causes her to fucking overgrow the island in giant ass vines and these little annoying ass spores. He is willing to do anything to win against Batman, and there's no line he won't cross. And then when you get to the end of the game, when you've finally gone through all this shit, and you're able to confront Joker face to face, after fighting all these goons and all these titan monsters, Joker, he starts to crack a little bit. He starts getting angry at Batman, and he says one of my favorite lines from this game. Oh, you're ruining my big night! Months of planning down the crapper! I just wanted to bring down your grim facade and for once let you see the world as I see it, giggling in a corner and bleeding. And then Joker showing that he is willing to do anything and there's no line he won't cross yet again. He shoots himself with the Titan and he turns into this big grotesque version of himself while choppers are all circling around and this is the final battle once again this should be goofy as fuck but it's not you see him and you see what he looks like and he's got his ribs are coming out of his skin he's grotesque to look at and he makes these gross ass noises change get crazy it's the only way to beat me you know you want to and after a long battle, Batman succeeds. Batman gives an explosive punch to Joker and saves the day once again. This story, I don't think, ever drags on at any point. There's no part that I'm not really looking forward to, and it's paced incredibly well. Now, of course, I didn't mention everything that happens, but I'd rather leave that to you if you've never played it before, because it absolutely is a delight. Now, with the story being great, what about the gameplay? Because you can have a good story, but if you don't have great gameplay, if your gameplay sucks, then you don't have a good game. I'm happy to say the gameplay is supreme. The combat system for this game was revolutionary for 2009. Although a lot of time has passed and we have three other Arkham games that approve upon the combat system each time, it can be a little jarring to go back and play this and it does seem a little bit slower, a little bit more clunky, but it is not something that has gotten bad over time. It was truly innovative for the time it released. Rocksteady deems this the free flow combat system and it is very smooth. Jumping from one enemy to another and countering, it makes you feel like you have full control and you can just feel 
the the impact for when he hits someone thanks to the sound effects and the design. And I'm happy to say that for stealth, it is just as great. Now in every stealth room, they have gargoyles up on the walls that Batman can perch onto and survey the area. And what helps this is a great system called detective mode. Everybody loves detective mode. Detective mode essentially lets you see enemies through walls and lets you get a better grasp on how you're going to deal with these people. There are an infinite number of ways you can go about taking down a room full of people. And throughout the main story, you gain more and more gadgets to add to your belt. And these both can be helpful during a combat and a stealth scenario. One of the first gadgets you get in the game is called the explosive gel. And let me tell you, it is the best thing in the world to put that shit on a wall and then when an enemy walks by it you just blow that shit up oh god i found someone over here you can also get more gadgets through the upgrade menu like the sonic battering and the multi battering but you can also get new moves to add variety to your stealth and combat section like in combat there's a move you can get that just lets you pick a guy up and hurl him across the room. And for self, the main upgrade everyone looks for is the inverted takedown. Nothing makes you feel more like Batman than waiting above an enemy and just scooping them up into the gargoyle and hanging them down from it. It is such a perfect addition to this game, especially when the other inmates go to look at what the fuck happened and then they, they just see their friend hanging upside down and you just take a battering and cut him down right in front of him and he gets so scared. It really does a great job at making you feel like Batman. When you walk into a room and nobody knows you're in there yet, they're walking around, they're all calm, they're they're taking a slow pace, but then as you take out more enemies, they will just start to get more and more afraid. They, you can see them shake, they'll start turning around more frequently. It is so sadistic and fun at the same time. And throughout the game, it'll add more challenge to your combat and stealth sections. For stealth, Joker will add these little collars onto the inmates to sound off when you take one of them down. So if you do a stealth takedown on an enemy, they will immediately know the location and be alerted of your presence. It's the suicide collar. It sounds weird. Suicide collar. And towards the end of the game, he also adds explosive gargoyles. So it renders the gargoyles that are frequently used very useless. I'm still up! And in combat, a few enemies get added. You got a guy with a stun stick and you have to jump over him and attack him from behind. And then you have a guy that likes to play with knives and you just have to stun him. The variety and replayability of this game is so high due to just the infinite number of ways you can go about dealing with these situations. There is no end to the possibilities. If you wanted to, I know this is everyone's favorite tactic, wait for a guy to get on the ledge and then back claw his ass straight off. <laughs> Now, I want to talk about the villains of Arkham Asylum. There's eight in total of the main ones, so I'll start with Victor Zaz. Now, Zaz is not in the game that much. He's in it for two scenes. He's in it at the beginning of the game, kind of used as a glide kick tutorial, and later in the game when he holds Dr. Young hostage. Now, although he's in two scenes, I like to think that he's very memorable. Mainly because of his unique look. He has marks all over his body, which in his bio is explained that every time he kills someone, he leaves a mark on his body, and, and there's a fuck ton of them. And his sadistic nature, he's probably the most sadistic person in this goddamn game. And after you meet him the second time, you throw a battering at him while he's holding Dr. Young hostage, and that's kind of just the end for his ass. So, not really a big player, but he does leave an impression. Next up, we have Harley Quinn. Now Harley, you never really face off against her. She just does a lot of taunting. She's pretty much a character that Joker sends to go stall Batman and strangely enough, kidnap people. Where's Gordon? Wouldn't you like I'm to over know? Here. Shut up! Ah. There are times where she's a bit comical, although she doesn't really pose a physical threat to Batman. She is great at just throwing shit in his way that he just constantly has to deal with. Dropping a fucking elevator on him, or hanging guards on top of electrified water, or sending waves of enemies at you while the floor could electrocute you. Of course, it's all halted when she actually does try to fight Batman, and he just doesn't have any of that shit. <laughs> 
And of course she's blinded by the Joker's fake love, especially when he's saying shit like this. Beating up Bane, feeding Scarecrow to Croc, slapping around Harley, my hobby by the way. And she does seem like a very sad character. Besides that, she's very enjoyable, very memorable in this game. Next up is Scarecrow. And I've already talked about how much I love the Scarecrow nightmares. And when he sends you in to these nightmares, it basically sends you into a 2D platformer. There's an enlarged version of himself standing at the center while you navigate around him, but you can't get spotted. If you get spotted, it's basically game over and a little slap on the face for Batman. With each nightmare, it gets a little bit longer and longer. In the second and third nightmare, we actually get to fight some skeletons that rise up out of the ground. And we actually have to reach an end point to where we shine a bat signal onto Scarecrow, which seemingly evaporates him. Kind of showing that Batman is mentally stronger than Scarecrow's toxin. But Scarecrow himself, you could tell that he, he's having a good time with this. Like he'll just giggle by himself at the amount of terror that he gives people. I also love his design in these games with, with the glove and the needles on it, almost like Freddy Krueger. And the kind of gas mask look with the bag over his face. It's just a really cool design for him. Also, I did mention this earlier, but after the third Scarecrow Nightmare, you actually have Scarecrow in your hand and it's such a great moment. You've ingested enough toxins to drive Dead man insane. What are you? I like how Scarecrow actually shows fear of his own here. Like he's scared of what Batman is kind of capable of mentally. But alas, all good things come to an end. Scarecrow wants to release a bunch of fear toxin into Gotham's water supply. But then Croc is a bit hungry himself, decides to take Scarecrow down underwater to presumably enjoy him as a meal. And speaking of Killer Croc, why don't we talk about him next? Croc is not in the game that much, but oh my god. When he's shown to you in the very opening of the game, that part leaves a little seed in the back of your mind saying, I hope I never have to fight this guy. Until cut to way later in the game when it's revealed, you have to go down to his lair in order to make an antidote for the Titan formula. So now you're finally down in the sewer and you've just seen Scarecrow get turned into a meal. And now the game wants you to go into his lair. Bitch, fuck that. I think every child remembers when they played this for the first time, they were on the verge of shitting themselves. Looking down that sewer, seeing the pallets that you have to walk on, not knowing what the fuck is gonna happen. And the worst part about it is, is that the game forces you to do it slowly. There is no running down there. We are going to drag out your dread as long as possible until he eventually pops out. Not only is this an area you are unfamiliar with, but this is an area where you have no leverage. There are no gargoyles, there's no using detective mode to see where he is underwater. All you have is your batarangs to use when he pops up so that way you can hit his shot collar and send him back down. So that when you finally get what you need and have to make it all the way back out of there, it is such a sigh of relief when we set a trap for him to send him way down under and finally get the fuck out of there. The breath of fresh air when we were no longer in that lair. It was amazing. Next there's Poison Ivy. Arguably the hardest boss fight of the game. We first see her in the penitentiary where she's begging to be let out. And of course, Batman ain't having that shit. But eventually, Harley Quinn goes on and lets her out. And she kind of just fucks off to the botanical gardens because, of course, she doesn't really have plans of pursuing Batman. She just kind of wants to chill out with her plants. And he just tells her to go back to her cell or he'll be after her. And she's just like, yeah, okay, sure. And of course, just Joker injects her with the Titan, which makes her go fucking ballistic and summons a giant goddamn plant. Now, I think most people regard this as the hardest boss fight in the game. It's certainly a creative one. I think it's my favorite. She kind of shoots these fireballs at you and lifts all these security guards up to go ahead and fight you. There'll be moments where she'll like have these vines raise up and if you don't get out of the way in time, they'll start fucking strangling you. And you have to wait until her shell opens up throw a battering at her to damage her. And this boss fight has two waves and it does take quite a while to actually beat her. And eventually, after a while, you realize she is no match for the Batman as he damages her enough to where she comes down to where he can spray explosive gel on her shell 
and explode that shit. And that's the end of Poison Ivy for now. I always liked Poison Ivy. She is clearly one of the most dangerous villains in Batman's rogue gallery, yet all she really wants to do is just hang out with her plants. Now she does get carried away with it, of course. She heavily values plant lives over humans. She hates, hates humans. But I do like the fact that she's not just like every other villain where she sees Batman and is like, ah, fuck you, Batman. It's not really until Joker instigates her <laughs> that she really starts having a problem. Next is Bane. And Bane being one of Batman's most notorious foes in the comics for breaking his fucking back like i said earlier he doesn't get a lot of screen time in this game but dare i say he is a big fucking menace literally as soon as he gets free it is on sight with batman he throws him through a fucking wall and that's where our boss fight begins now this boss fight is nothing spectacular it's very simple yet also very fun it sees you dealing with waves of enemies that bane throws as you defeat them and bane will go ahead and throw things off a wall towards you and it's sometimes very funny to see the thugs he sent out get knocked down but you have to wait until bane charges you to throw a battering at him to which he will get stunned run into a wall and then that's where you can beat him up and cut one of his titan tubes and you do that for about three more times until the boss fight ends letting batman escape from underground until he appears once more above ground and that's where we get that iconic moment that i talked about earlier with the batmobile again i wish he was in the game longer but he does make one hell of an impact and an impression for the time that he's there next we have the joker i've said a lot about joker during the story portion of this video but there's not enough things i could say mark hamill plays him so goddamn well. And this personally is my definitive version of the Joker in this game. It's just great how he taunts you all along the way until the very end. And he'll just do things just to fuck with you for no reason. Like there's one part in the game where you have to save these two guards that are strapped together in chairs or else a bomb will go off and the whole time you're trying to figure out how to get to them he will start counting down slowly until he reaches zero the thing is if you let him reach zero just to see what happens this is what he says three two one boom <laughs> I also love how sadistic this version of Joker is. Like when you're chasing him throughout the game, you can see just a trail of bodies that he has left for you. Like there's one part of the game where you catch up with Joker in the botanical gardens. He ends up running away. And after you leave that room, you see that he killed the doctors that you had just saved not even five minutes ago. And also there's this scene. You need to stop this now before it goes too far. Stop. But everyone's dying to see what I do next. Let him go now. Really? Okay, if you say so, that. <laughs> Whoopsie! Go! <laughs> well, yes, this version of Joker is very campy and comical and energetic. He is also equally as frightening. And by the end of the game, when he transforms into the Titan monster, He's just simply had enough of that. Now, I wish I could say that the final boss fight with the Joker is the perfect boss fight to end on this game. And everyone has their feelings about this boss fight. Me personally, I'm okay with it, but I do feel like it could have been more. It's pretty much three waves of enemies coming at you. Then Joker comes down, swipes at you while you run away. He goes up and you just wait for a helicopter to come and distract him until you can pull him down. And you do that about three times until the boss fight's over. Very easy, but it's still a banger ass ending. Now the final villain I want to talk about is a villain that is both really good and yet everybody in the community fucking hates him. This villain is none other than the Riddler. He comes in very early into the game right into your ear. Yes, it is I, Edward Nigma, the Riddler, and more importantly, your intellectual superior. And he explains that he's hidden a shit ton of trophies all over the island, and it's your job to find all of them. There's like over 200. And it's not like these trophies are in the most 
easiest and convenient of spots. No, it takes a little bit of digging to actually define where these fucking things are at. And he'll pop in occasionally in your ear just to shit talk you. Like if you find a trophy, he'll pop into your ear and be like, a fifth grader could have found that one. That, 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 was, that was really easy, Batman. That was supposed to be really easy. What do you call the detective who is only halfway to the end? Loser? There's stuff you can scan, whether it be a hidden question mark or alluding to a, another Batman character or a piece of lore. There's interview tapes you can collect for a bunch of the characters. So it's not like you're not gaining anything out of uh, collecting all these things. It's just the fact that there's so many. I guarantee to you that everyone, if they do not know where a Riddler trophy is or they are having a hard time solving a puzzle that they have searched up Batman Arkham videos on YouTube because that person is our savior. <laughs> and the thing is, it only gets worse as the games go on. Each game, it gets fucking worse. But after you have done extensive researching, a lot of scouting, and have wasted all of your energy on finding the last Riddler trophy, you finally end up catching him by tracking his location <laughs> and sending the police on over there. <laughs> Everyone loves Riddler as a character, but goddamn, do we never look forward to those fucking trophies. And lastly, I don't think we can end this video without talking about the asylum itself. It really is its own character in this game. Whenever you walk around the asylum, there's always kind of this haunting presence that you feel looming over you like you feel the weight of whatever has ever happened here every building you enter in this game has its own identity vastly different from one another but it all still keeps that very creepy tone say you go in the medical center you can see what looks to be blood smeared over everything heads and fingers, body parts, all in these jars. Everything seems messy and dirty. The equipment they have seems like damn near torture traps, suggesting that this was never really a great place even before the inmates took it over. And around the asylum, you can find these little chronicle of Arkham stones that you can scan. They count towards a Riddler thing, but it's essentially someone leaving you a message, mainly running through the story of Armadeus Arkham, the founder of Arkham Asylum, was driven to a path of insanity after his first patient named Mad Dog, because after he deemed Mad Dog sane, he went ahead and killed Armadeus's wife, causing Armadeus to snap, and Armadeus ended up killing Mad Dog. Eventually, Armadeus was thrown into the asylum that he created. And you can actually see his cell in the game, along with his grave. Oh, and the person who is writing the stones for you to read is none other than Quincy Sharp the warden of the asylum who also had a psychotic episode and believes he is the reincarnated spirit of Armadeus Arkham. He also likes to kill patients. And I mention all that not only because it adds so much weight to the haunting feeling and presence you feel over the game, but there is also just so much lore you can find around the island through Riddler puzzles, interview tapes, and through the stones I just mentioned. You can find so many hints to other Batman villains like Catwoman and Penguin. Going into the penitentiary, you can find Calendar Man's cell, Two-Face's cell, and that's just the tip of the iceberg. There's just so much thrown onto the map onto the island, into the buildings of this game. So much personality. It's not just a, a map with nothing in it that's empty. You could take one good look at any of the buildings in Arkham Asylum, go inside of them, and just have an idea about what goes on there. Rocksteady took the time to perfect the attention to details for things you might not even see. For example, that building with Joker's face on it, you could go in there at any point in time and you will see the Joker mannequin with the TV on his head. Like the first time you enter, he just says, 
maybe you could use someone to talk to in here and a little bit more but that's the general idea and i don't think after this point many people really came back to the room but the thing is you can keep coming back after major events that happen in the story and he'll have more and more dialogue loaded up how about baby boy then Oh, bet you were shocked to see him, weren't you? Like, at one point, there's multiple Joker mannequins that are in there. At a certain point, Harley pops up on the TV screen. It's a cool little detail that I don't think a lot of people notice. They didn't have to do it, but they went all out with it. You can find things like the meat that they feed Killer Croc down in intensive treatment. Also, what seems to be one of Scarecrow's hideouts. You can find a bunch of people that Zazz killed and prop them up like they're playing a card game. I didn't even mention the secret room that Rocksteady put into the Arkham Mansion that they had to reveal to everyone because nobody fucking found it. If you go into the Arkham Mansion and put three explosive gels next to each other onto this one specific wall and blow it up, it reveals Quincy Sharp's secret room. And in this room, you'll find some sort of plans to maybe expand from Arkham Asylum. Perhaps maybe in Arkham City. But the atmosphere of this game is just perfect. Everything works well with one another. It all just wraps around you like a blanket and whispers in your ear that nobody should be here. There is so much more I could say about this game. I could ramble on all a goddamn day, but we don't have all goddamn day. As I said earlier, I have played this game more than any game in my life. I have beaten it so many times that I have damn near everything memorized. And I just wanted to come on here and talk about why I love it so much. This game means so much to me and I'm sure it means a lot to other people as well. I remember when I first played the demo, I was begging my family to please get this goddamn game for me. It was all I would talk about or allude to every single day. And when I finally got it, I was the happiest kid alive. And to this day, at least once every year, I will go back and play the story and 100% the game again because my love for it has not diminished after all this time. It was absolutely revolutionary for the comic book gaming scene and changed exactly what it meant to be a superhero video game. And it still stands the test of time. And I believe it always will. Please forgive me if this video seems formatted weird in any way. I'm still very new to this and kind of unfamiliar with the proper way of doing these types of videos, but I want to I want to get better and, and learn some more. Let me know what you guys think. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. Write down in the comments what Arkham Asylum means to you. Have you played it? Do you remember the first time playing it? Share your thoughts down below. I have been Goodnight Gaming. Take care. I hope you have a lovely rest of your day. Peace.